This next section covers some material that is not discussed in your textbook. So I called it chapter 21, which is supplemental material, and it's going to deal with functions. Now functions were dealt with in some depth in chapter 4, but we're going to go into a bit more depth with them for this chapter. So to start off, uh, we mentioned before that we can deal with relations and functions, uh, but let's give them a proper definition. Uh, a relation is just a set of ordered pairs. And again, an ordered pair, typically we deal with x, y. It is possible, however, uh, if we want to deal with uh, three dimensions, we could have an x, a y, and a z. Uh, we'll also talk about a little bit later how we could deal with something like a radius and an angle. Those are all sets of ordered pairs uh, that we can talk about relations that relate these um, variables to each other. Uh, a function is taking that a step further. So a relation can be any type of um, action that converts one of these numbers in the first set into a number for the second set. A function is a little bit more specific. A function is a type of relation for which each element of the domain and we'll talk about what the domain here is in a second and each element corresponds to exactly one element of the range and we'll talk about what the range is as well here in a second. So uh, when we talk about these elements, again, we're talking about the numbers or letters or whatever in the set that we're talking about. Uh, the domain, again, is the set of input values. So this is the set of values of the independent variable. or variables depending on if we're dealing with a single input variable. So these are the set of values for which a function or relation is defined. Typically we use x as our domain or independent variable. So independent variable means those are the values that we can pick. Those are the values that we input. Uh, the range, on the other hand, deals with the dependent variables. So the range is the set of values of a function or relation that correspond with the dependent value. Again, typically we use y, not always, but typically we use y, or we'll talk about function notation, which is f of x. Uh, again, um, the domain or the x values, the input values, the independent variables, range are the outputs, the dependent variables, the y values. So. Uh, let's go through here and determine, so these are all relations. We want to determine whether a relation is a function. 
And again, if you go back to this definition of a function, it says that it is a relation for which each element of the domain corresponds to exactly one element of the range. And the important thing here when we talk about this is that we want each x value to go to exactly one y value. We do not want it to go to two or three or four values. So this one here is a function. This one here is not a function. So if we have an x value going to more than one y value, we know we've got an issue. So let's look at some examples here. So we want to determine whether these are functions. So we want to look 2 goes to 4, 3 goes to 7, and 9 goes to 2. Do any of those x values repeat? In this case, no. So we have a function. And uh, if we want to write down the domain, there's a couple of ways we can write this. In this case, we'll just list the values 2, 3, and 9. Again, we're listing those first values. As far as the range goes, we list the y values 4, 7, and 2. So when we've got a nice like ordered pair list here, it's pretty easy to find the domain and range. Uh, let's look at the next example. If we want to determine whether or not the relation is a function, I want you to pause it here, determine whether or not you think it is a function, and write its domain and range. And once you've done that, resume the video and see if you're correct. So you should have established that this is not a function, uh, primarily because you have this point here, 5, negative 1, and 5, 1. Uh, both of those have the same x value going to different y values. Uh, another way to tell is that your domain here has three elements that is smaller than the four elements in the range. And so that's going to cause an issue. That means that this is not a function. We'll look at an equation now. Uh, so we have y equals 2x squared minus 3. We want to determine whether or not it is a function. Uh, there is something called the vertical line test. The vertical line test, if we were to graph this thing, uh, in this case it's 2x squared minus 3, so it would hit down here at negative 3, and it would look something like this. Uh, the vertical line test says that if we draw any vertical line, it can only hit the graph at one spot. In this case, that is correct. It only co crosses the graph at one spot, so this is a function. Uh, typically, anything with an exponent integer is going to be a function. Uh, so in this case, uh, if we look at this function, uh, the domain, and I'm going to write this a little bit different, instead of listing out all of the numbers, we really can plug in any number here. So I'm going to write this as the domain x such that x is an element of the real numbers. And so I'll write that out in words here. x such that so such that is this bar such that x and then this symbol here is an element and then finally we've got this here of the real numbers. So that's just the shorthand of writing that sentence. The domain's a little bit trickier to find unless you have the graph sometimes. In this case, the range uh, we're looking at is the lowest possible value that we're going to get out of here, which is negative 1. And in this case, it would be y. Again, range is always going to be y such that y is greater than or equal to negative 3. We can also tell that because that it's a parabola and our lowest point there is our y-intercept, that negative 3. For this one. Again, it's not always that easy to find the range. Uh, in this case it was, so I, ex I explained it there. Um, finally, we've got a radical expression here. Again, I apologize sometimes. Uh, program doesn't show negative signs. And in this case we've got 16 minus the square root of x plus 5. 
So uh, again, we could graph this if we wanted to. Um, in this case, it is a function. A square root is a function as long as we only have one symbol here. If it had been plus or minus instead of just this minus here, then we would have an issue. But since it's just minus, we've got 16 minus a number. That's going to be fine. So this is a function. Uh, again, if we wanted to find the domain, the domain in this case, we have to worry about the radical. Uh, we need to make sure that x plus 5 is greater than 0. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative 5. So our domain in this case is x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 5. Uh, and again, if you were writing this in set notation, uh, you would write it as, since we've got the greater than or equal to, we would be starting here at negative 5 with the bracket because we've got greater than or equal to, and we would be going out to infinity. And we would close it with a parenthesis because a parenthesis is always uh, what we use to close an infinity. Uh, likewise, up here, if we were looking at the range uh, for the previous example, uh, we would have uh, starting with negative 3 with a bracket and going to infinity. Very similar. Uh, in this case, again, if we look at the range, it's a little bit harder to see. Uh, in this case, we're starting with 16 and we're subtracting numbers. Uh, so if you were uh, graphing this, uh, and it might be helpful to kind of look at it with your calculator. So if we look at our calculator here, uh, we're going to go to y equals, we would put in 16 minus, we've got the square root uh, right here, x plus 5, and we'll make sure we close that parentheses. Uh, if you hit graph here, you would see that uh, nothing shows up. <laughs> uh, we might need to zoom a little bit. Uh, if you go to zoom, uh, a lot of times it's under standard, which is fine. Uh, you may want to scroll down to what is known as zoom fit and see if that helps. And in that case, you can actually see the graph there. Uh, so what's happening here is this is starting up here at 16 and then it's decreasing. Uh, we could zoom out a little bit more if we wanted to. And you'd see how it's just kind of starting at 16 there and then decreasing off. Uh, so if we wanted to look at our range of values, so again, we're kind of at 16, we start here and we go down. Um, and we could look at our range in this case, uh, which is going to be all y values such that uh, y is less than or equal to 16 in this case. And so again, if we wanted to write that in set notation, we'd be starting down here with negative infinity because we want smaller numbers and going up to 16. And we would be closing that off with brackets because it can't equal 16. OK, so last thing here, let's consider a practical example of driving Terminal Beach. Say you're going on summer vacation. Um, you're maintaining a constant speed of about 70 miles per hour using cruise control. You relate your distance to the amount of time you've been traveling. Uh, we know that distance equals rate times time. So we have that. So in this case, our rate is 70. And at any given time t, we could find out how far we had gone. So how far, this is again, this is a function here. So how far would we have gone in one hour? Well, d is equal to 70 times one hour. And we get that we had gone 70 miles approximately. How far would you have driven in two and a half hours? So again, pause the video here and find how far you would have driven in two and a half hours. Again, we always want to make sure that we have our units. You would have driven 175 miles. Uh, if you need, if you need to travel 630 miles to get to Myrtle Beach, how long would it take you to get there? In this case, we've got our distance, so we've got 630 is equal to 70 t. And then we can solve for t in this case by dividing both sides by 70. And we find that t is equal to 9 hours. So uh, this concludes this video. There are a few more for this section, so please make sure you watch all of them before moving on to do your homework for this section 21.1.